Johnny Rock Show. Rockin' 101, the rock station. Rockin' 101, you're on the air. Please don't swear. Is this uh, Mark Rivera? <laughs> Hello. Is this Johnny Rock? Oh, in the flesh. I love babe. it. Hey, uh, where are you How calling? Are you? I'm good. Where are you calling from? Can uh, I ask? Uh, Brewster, New York, about an hour north of Manhattan. I know exactly where you are. Well, welcome to the show. I've never, I've never had the pleasure. The brand new book, which looks great. I mean, this is a, this is a book for people that love music or just love you or hate music and hate you. You're going to learn all about it. <laughs> I'm going to learn all the real dirt. <laughs> exactly. Sideman in pursuit of the next gig available right now. Amazon.com. Wherever books are sold on the cover, it's you laying on a, a piano. In some schlub playing that piano. No, that's Billy Joel. <laughs> that's Billy Joel. Can I? Can I first of all yeah. ask when did you start playing with Billy Joel on the road? About uh, eight months before that photograph was taken, I started in February of 1982. So this is the 41st year. Wow. Of my of my career with Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was going to say, first time I saw him, I was a kid, but it was the uh, the Stranger Tour. So you weren't there yet. I missed you by a couple of years, but I no. saw you. I saw you after 82. I saw, were you, uh, let's just talk about Billy Joel gigs. Were you at, I bet you were, were you at the Nassau Coliseum gig that was filmed for HBO? Yeah, that's what that picture's taken from. Oh, because, well. The photograph on the cover is that, that that's, the photograph on that cover is only the good die young. It was New Year's Eve, I believe, uh, ninth, December of 82. You know, it's so weird. I was at that gig. I was working in New well, York. Well, there you go. And I, you didn't notice the picture? I, 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 I had to zoom in <laughs> to see me. More me now. I'm on the cover. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's great. Now, you know, it's one thing to uh, talk to a guitar player or even a drummer. And say, you know, what got you into uh, rock and roll? Well, but when you're a sax player, there's not a lot of gigs like guitar players or drummers. You know. No. How did this no. all? Ha how did it happen that you went from a uh, saxophone to uh, playing with these rock and roll idols? Well, I was always a rocker more than anything. Uh, the Be look, the Beatles changed my life on February 9th, nineteen sixty four, which they changed everybody, uh, the whole culture. My uncle Vinny. My godfather played saxophone, and I loved the saxophone. I just liked the sound of it. But I had already played guitar. I had already played guitar like the Spanish guitar my father. And in fact, if you flip through the book, there's a picture of me holding the Beatle cover and, uh, and holding his, the guitar. And I'm trying to plaster my hair down so it looked like a Beatle cup, but it was ridiculous. But uh, uh, my real inspirations excuse me, have always been rock and roll. Uh, people say, who is your inspiration and they expect me to say oh Charlie Parker and, uh, Ben Webster or uh, John Coltrane and I say Jimi Hendrix and Jeff Beck those are the guys who I cut my teeth on though I I saw Hendrix four times I saw Jeff Beck many times and I play saxophone like a guitar player like a rock guitar player not a not a flash guitarist uh, I've always loved those great long tones that the guitars have such a great tone to them, and the saxophone to me is the closest instrument to the human voice. I love to sing, and I love playing saxophone. So it was, it was kind of right there. It was easy to pick it up, and people say, "Well, isn't it a difficult instrument?" I said, "No, it's like a, it's like is it, is it difficult for Michael Phelps to swim? No, he jumps in the water. He does it. You do what you do, and you do what you love." And I'm very blessed to be able to do what I love and, and make a career of it. We're talking with uh, Uncle Vinny's favorite, Mark Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his new book, Sideman in Pursuit of the Next Gig, available now, Amazon.com, wherever books are sold. So you're a little kid. You're uh, you're posing for photos with the Beatles, uh, you know, meet the Beatles or whatever. And then, exactly. and then uh, in the blink of an eye uh, or two, you're playing with Ringo Starr and his all-star band. That's amazing, isn't it? Well, how about, how about a, a step before that? In 1975, I backed John Lennon on, on a TV show. No. I mean, this, was, this, was, this was surreal. Yeah, if, uh, in 1975, uh, I was in a band called Bumps, 
and uh, the band had already done some backing vocals on on the Walls and Bridges album. So he was going to do a thing called a tribute to Sir Lou Grade. And in 1975, <clears throat> excuse me, I got to uh, back John Lennon. In fact, we played the track. We, we recorded a track, and John sang live. In 1975, I believe it was, it's the last live recording of John Lennon singing Imagine. And I was there on stage. Unbelievable. You know. Yeah, this- and that's, I mean, you talk about full circle. Oh. The, only, the only feel that I hadn't performed with or ever met was George. Right. Man. You know, so. you're the second guest this week that has uh, performed with Lennon. Uh, seriously, I had May Pang on Monday. Uh, you know, she oh, does, May Pang, she a good uh, friend. Yes. Oh, well, you, well, then you know, she. I never knew she does the uh, whisper of John in uh, Number Nine Dream. Huh? Yep. I always thought that was Yoko. Yes, yes. I thought that was Yoko. But no, yeah. no. Well, that, that was a whole. That was a whole other time. That was, a, that was the, the the weekend. The uh, oh, what do they call it again? The Lost Weekend. The Lost Weekend. That was the longest Lost Weekend that anybody ever had. Oh, man. (laughs) Wow. Now, uh, are you going back out with uh, Mr. Billy Joel? Because he's coming uh, to the U.S. Bank Stadium, like, in the fall with Stevie Nicks. Yes, Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm out with him. I was supposed to be in Texas today, but uh, Stevie Nicks is, I'm not sure who in her organization has COVID, so we had to postpone that till next year. Right. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm with Billy... That's what I do. Uh, we were supposed to be in Texas. We're going to be. We play the Garden once a month. We're heading towards our 100th show in the residency at uh, you people. Uh, you refer to it as Madison Square Garden, and the band we refer to it as the Madison Square Dinner Theater <laughs> because we play it so often, and uh, the, the, the room is so dialed in. It's just amazing. It's amazing that we get to do this. Yeah, I have a very good friend that went and saw it at Madison Square Garden uh, just before the pandemic, and he said it was unbelievable. Right, right. Uh, yeah, if you've never seen Billy Joel in New York, let alone Mark Rivera in New York, it's a must-see. Huh? It's amazing. Well, you talk about just before the pandemic. In fact, uh, the pandemic was the reason this book took place. I really didn't have any intention of writing a book until a woman, uh, Betsy Berg, said, you know, you could do some engagements if you had a book. I'm like, people write a book just before they fall off stage and don't have anything else to do. And she said, no, nah, I disagree. So then COVID hit. We got back from Mexico City. And the next thing I know, my wife Sandra and I got violently ill. We had, we had the uh, high-octane COVID. <laughs> and this is before anyone had any, um, any uh, vaccines. So we were... Locked down for about 18 months. And thankfully, Billy took care of everyone. I can't even imagine what we'd be without that. I mean, the guy took care of everyone in the band, the crew, the, the, the truck drivers. It was as if nothing happened. And nobody else did that. So I'm very, he's, he's way on top of my list. Wow. And you're feeling, you must yeah. be feeling fine now. I mean, I be, would have been worried about the lungs, seriously, with COVID. Oh, yeah, my, my, my lungs... Honestly, my lungs are fine because of my playing. Uh, I swim, I play, and I immediately was out walking in, in, the, in the woods. My wife, I was more concerned about uh, that Sandra would be okay because she's prone to bronchitis. Long story short, we got through it, and it took a month before we were able to get tested that we proved positive. But, hey, it was a terrible time, and all I could say is thank God we got through it, and hopefully, hopefully we'll all come back on the other side of it. Well, God bless. Look at that. The new book, Sideman, In Pursuit of the Next Gig, now at Amazon.com, wherever books are sold. On the cover, it's you, Billy Joel, and Johnny Rock up in the stands in 1980. <laughs> I, I think I see you up the, the corner, Johnny. <laughs> Actually, I think Billy's looking at me to the left. Yes, that's what it is. He might be. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm the one uh, screaming, do the stranger. No. All right. Well, listen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the music, and thanks for coming on the show. Anytime, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, Johnny. Come on back. I will. I'll take you up on it. God bless. Have a great holiday, brother. You too, Booby. The Johnny Rock Show. Rockin' 101. The